Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Ma Capital checking in. Today is Wednesday, October 11th. Uh, tomorrow will be Thursday, October 12th, and we'll have the big CPI report coming at 8.30 a.m. Uh, the PPI report actually came in hotter than expected today, and this is something to keep an eye on for tomorrow. It was interesting because within this PPI report, we actually saw uh, food and uh, prices actually rise at a much faster pace than what was uh, the previous month. Uh, producer prices, final demands for food were up 0.9% in September. Um, and that was versus a decline of 0.5% last month. So not exactly sure how if this is going to feed right into CPI tomorrow, but it is something worth noting and, and at least being aware of. Um, because that certainly came in hotter, and uh, CPPI overall came in hotter on the headline. And the core, the uh, food, energy, and trade year over year came in uh, a little bit below. Um, so for tomorrow, at least, we're looking for uh, CPI to rise by 0.3% month over month, 0.6% last month. X food and energy looking for an inline 0.3%. Year over year is expected to dip to 3.6% to 3.7%. Course expected to be 4.1 down from 4.3. Um, at least based off of uh, CPI swaps, we're looking for a 3.55 number. Um, this is uh, basically in line with what the street estimates are. But what's interesting is that when we look at some of the other models, we have the uh, Cleveland Fed, which is estimating 3.7. We have uh, the the Calshi uh, website, which is uh, an online marketplace uh, forecasting 3.7. You have the Bloomberg Economics uh, forecasting a 3.85 year over year number. So there is quite of a, a dispersion between all three of them. Um, in the past, at least, the CPI has, uh, you know, come in below most of these expectations in the past. So this is something to be aware of. Um, just because the last month we saw CPI actually come in ahead of uh, the swaps, the Bloomberg estimate, and the um, Calci estimate, the only one that missed was on the Cleveland Fed. Um, but the swaps have tended to be the more accurate, at least in recent months. So again, we're looking for the 3.5 number, but there is some large dispersion between some of the models. and. Given that you had a hotter food price index on the um, on the uh, on the PPI, and then also this month, interestingly, uh, the Mannheim used auto index actually increased on a month-over-month -month basis. And again, there's not a direct relationship, but you can see that to some degree, when these when this index is rising, you're seeing you know the month-over-month -month number in CPI rising. So. Again, if you're going to kind of, I guess, bet on something, uh, I guess th the data sort of suggests maybe there could be an upside surprise tomorrow if you wanted to, to play that because certainly it looks like there's a couple of data points that suggest that there's an upward bias to this number. Um, and so, you know, when we look at the equity markets overall uh, and we look at the S&P, um, we had this... Uh, we had this rally now the last couple of days, and I have some Elliott Wave patterns drawn out because I'm trying to map out where we are. And what I found interesting uh, to this point is that we've rallied. Uh, this was a 100% extension off of Wave A, nearly perfect hit. Um, and then it looks like we have uh, a five-wave impulse down. And then we had an ABC uh, retracement up. This retracement to this point is a 78.6% uh, retracement of this decline, and um, this and this extension is almost a 100% extension off of wave A. So, you know, at least you've seen now the S&P 500 rally four days in a row and five out of the last six days. Um, and so, there's certainly an argument to be made that you know we could be seeing a trend reversal here. I guess. The other thing, uh, if we look at, you can see that we're basically now at the the base of this uh, gap at 43.75. Sometimes these can serve as resistance levels as well. So, you know, I think the CPI data tomorrow is going to tell us a lot about which way the market's going to move. 
Um, this was a pretty big, you know, rally into the close. So off of the Fed minutes. And so I would think that it wouldn't be surprising, obviously, if we got a hotter number to undercut this low pretty quickly tomorrow and then fill this, you know, gap down here. And then potentially setting up a, a steeper drop on the flip side, you know, you take out this high really quickly and, you know, you have the opportunity to fill the gap up to 4,400 and maybe even go all the way to 4,420. The problem, though, is that you have um, the market right now, at least the options market, is only pricing a 75 basis point move in the S&P 500 based off of a long uh, a straddle position. Uh, for the if you buy a put in a call for expiration tomorrow so the market's really not pricing in a huge move in cpi and that would imply that we see you know a, a subdued sort of move and you know maybe you get uh you could probably get a move up to around 44 you know 20 or so 4400 likewise you could maybe get a, a decline somewhere into the you know 4340 region and certainly it doesn't seem all that potentially hard to maybe even retest the 4300 region um another thing that's worth noting is that the the call wall is around 4400 right now and uh, if we look at tomorrow's expiration date and we look at the gamma levels at least as of today there was a very large amount of call volume here at 4400 and that's likely to serve as uh, some form of resistance as well, uh, delimiting the upside. And if we go out to October 20th's expiration date, you can also see that there's a very large amount of call and put gamma here up at 4,400. And that's also likely to act as a, a level where you're likely to see the market top out on a move higher. So again, at least the way it seems right now, there's certainly a wave count to suggest that maybe this is the end of the rally here and we're due to see a steeper decline. While the upside seems a little bit more limited right now, given how the options market is positioned going into tomorrow's report. Uh, when we look at the NDX, this is also uh, an important level here. You can see we were testing this 15,240 region. We tested it three times now over the last couple of days. So again, a, a better than ex a hotter than expected CPI report, I would think, leads to us undercutting this low pretty quickly tomorrow and then with the opportunities to fill some gaps down to 15,045 or so. Likewise, you know, you can see that there's a, a clear trend line in here. Uh, and again, this would be your, you know, your upside here to 15,325. There's also um, a gap at this level here that could potentially serve as another target for the S for the NASDAQ on the upside at 15,470, but that would require going through this trend line. And again, I don't really know at this point whether or not the NASDAQ is gonna have the juice to do that. Just because we've already seen um, a fairly you know, steady advance four days in a row up, five out of the last six days. So again, this is something to be to be mindful of. It looks like at this point, we've come back above this, this big uptrend. And so at least for now, you know, you can make an argument that yes, we're still in a downtrend. You have, you know, a low here, a lower low here, and you still have, you know, a series of lower lows. So really, until you start getting above this level here, it's really tough to say you're out of the woods for the longer term picture. When you look at the Dow, the index really continues to just go nowhere. Um, it looks like right now, at least we're seeing, you know, what could potentially be a, a, a reverse head and shoulders. When you look at it really quickly on the Dow, which um, would suggest maybe there's also a little bit more upside here. Um, but again, this is largely going to be dependent upon the data because when you know head and shoulders patterns fail, they tend to serve as continuation patterns. And so if you were to uh, see the neckline break here around this 33,850 region, I would think that that probably means that you could see uh, something you know larger, another three percent tack on, and maybe get back up to and start testing this thirty-four thousand six hundred region again. Um, likewise, if this turns out to be a failure, and again, it looks like you have an ABC pattern here, uh, which would suggest that maybe this is uh, the start of a, a retracement. 
we can measure this out and you can see that that's also almost a 100 percent extension off of this leg higher so again this could mark a potential high for the dow and if this were a uh if we were to get a hotter number tomorrow i could see us gapping below this 33600 region and maybe testing 33,250 or so in the coming days. So again, there's potential for upside on all of these. Um, I think that it's gonna really be dependent on the data. Um, I think if you had to have a bias in terms of the way the data comes in, again, this is a tough call. It's very tough to call CPI, but again, you have a, a food number that clearly came in hotter. How that feeds into the CPI, could there be a, a one or two month delay? But certainly you have to think that there's a, a potential there. Uh, the Mannheim used car index certainly has a relationship to the upside based off of what we've seen in the past. And um, you, do, you definitely have a few models that are pointing to higher uh, CPI rates. So again, this the only thing really pointing to something lower or something more in line at this point is the swap market. And this has been a fairly um, accurate reading over the last few months. So best of luck tomorrow. I uh, hope you find this helpful. Talk to you soon. Bye.